Uh, thank you, Ms. Williams, and good afternoon, Excellencies all. Uh, Mrs. Davis, Permanent Secretary, and our friends who are here. Um, so, Rhoda and I met in South Africa shortly after I became Minister for the first time. What is that? You remember the day? <laughs> She's not getting married to me. <laughs> Huh? It was a Tuesday. <laughs> uh, sounded Shakespearean to me. <laughs> you know, like, it was a summer's evening in his tent. <laughs> yes. Um, but, you know, I, I didn't like how uh, Miss Jackson, which, which is what I really always call her, uh, I didn't like how she departed the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I must tell you that straight up. And whenever I'm in an opposition mode, I always think if I get the opportunity to do something to fix it, I will do so. And so I'm glad I've had this opportunity to fix that as much as I can. Um, so I was thinking uh, back to this, I hope you find this humorous, but my father was cremated, and I told him uh, to tell his wife before he died that he was going to be cremated because, you know, she wasn't for that, I can tell you. As it happened, she died before he did, so it wasn't a question. But anyway, he was cremated. And uh, so the interment took place at the Western Cemetery, and we were all standing there, and I remember my cousin Christian saying, just a few verses, and then we put the ashes in the... And he said, you can put him down dry slowly. Right? So, so we got to sing a hymn or something, right? So that's what I thought <laughs> today. You know, we can't let you walk out of here. <laughs> Unless we have an elaborate ceremony, you know, with trumpets and saxophones and, and uh, you know, all the things that Ms. Williams said. We have to send you out with flourish. Particularly since I'm looking forward to this wedding, I gotta tell you. <laughs> now, I told her, what, is, what, is, what day it is, the 22nd of July? I told her, I wanna see if she can wear white. <laughs> I'm, I'm a veil too. <laughs> if you don't do that, I'm not coming to the wedding. <laughs> I can tell you that now. <laughs> but I, I agree with everything that's been said. I think she's had a distinguished career, served us really well. And one of the issues with a young foreign service that you need is structure. And you know, Ms. Jackson is like a school teacher. So that's what we needed, is someone who would, you know, bring discipline and timeliness and structure and and also the so that the external image of the ministry would be buttressed by someone who brought that kind of leadership uh, to the ministry. And that was my hope, that was my expectation, and that's been met, and I'm happy that she agreed to do so. I'm sorry that she's leaving, but <laughs> Mrs. Davis, I'll tell you about the Foreign Service. I've been around it now, 2002, formally, but I find that foreign service officers have the practice of what you call the long goodbye. Um, goodbye is not, what is it? So long is not goodbye. No, you know, anyway, there's never goodbye. So we all circulate. So don't be surprised if uh, you are running around New York in some diplomatic quarters. And there comes Ms. Jackson. She, she's now you know, consultant to something, you know, advisor to something. That's how it happens. That, that's my experience because at, the whole Caribbean is like that, you know. I mean, you just keep meeting people. Um, and it's important because we have this uh, very small uh, foreign service. And so you have to rely on the experience of uh, people who have done it before. And that's why Carlton Wright is here. Uh, we've started the institute. He's helping out with that. 
uh, yeah, to translate a document from French for me the other day. Um, I could manage to read it, but you know, to put it in proper proper English from French translation. And then, of course, there's all the history of how foreign affairs got to be where it is. And you know, we've reached this point. I've said twice, Mrs. Davis, since I've been speaking at these in this graduation season. I actually asked the kids if they knew who Lyndon Pindling was or is. I actually asked them because I'm not sure they do. Um, I was telling them that my graduation speaker in, 1960, in 1970 was Lyndon Pindling. And I said to them, do you know who that is? And they all said, yeah, we know who that is. So that's, that's a good thing. But you need the institutional memory. Uh, it protects the reputation of the organization. And uh, the history of the organization uh, binds us more strongly together. It makes the institution stronger. So thank you, uh, Ms. Jackson, for all of that. And I wish you the very best going forward. And it is sweet sorrow. Bless you. Thank you, Minister Mitchell. Ambassador, as you get on a close consultation.